I just want to start by saying that every single person in this room can make an impact on someone else. I was in a bar in New Orleans with a friend, and I meet a professor from the University of Southern Mississippi. Her name was Dr. Vanessa Murphy. And while we were having a conversation, she said, Bill, would you ever come up to Hattiesburg, Mississippi? And I said, where in the world is Hattiesburg, Mississippi? And she said, it's about an hour and a half away from here, but you could make a difference in the lives of students. And a lot of people don't come to Southern Miss. And I said, I'll be there. And when I got there, I met some of the most remarkable students. And during lunch, a person named DeAnthony sat next to me, and I said, what is your passion? And he said, Mr. Amata, I want to make a difference, not only for the people I work with, but for our profession. Will you help me? I was blown away by that, and I said, absolutely. And so I've adopted the University of Southern Mississippi, and I had a chance to get to know DeAnthony. And one thing that I just love about DeAnthony is DeAnthony is a person that always says to me, I'm a man of very few words. And I said, what would you like me to say about you? And he said, Bill, please don't embarrass me, but I know you will. <laughs> so anyways, after I got to know him, I said, where do you want to be? And he said, Bill, I would like to work at one of the bigger agencies. And I said, name an agency. He said, any of the agencies, I want to make people in Mississippi proud. I want to make people in Alabama, in Linden, Alabama, where he's from. I want people to realize that I can make it so that others can follow in my footsteps. And I said, DeAnthony, where would you like to be? You've opened the door, and I want to make sure that I open that door for you as well. And he said, I would love to work for Weber Shanwick. He ultimately got a chance to meet the executives at Weber Shanwick, specifically Andy Polanski, who you may know, and ultimately got a job at Weber Shanwick, this small town gentleman from Linden, Alabama, and it made news in Mississippi. <laughs> and I was excited, I was like saying, oh my God, a person that I really believe in has made it and is now in New York. A little while later, I get a phone call. Mr. Mata, please don't be mad at me. And I was like saying, are you gonna perpetuate stereotypes about millennials and Gen Zers? <laughs> are you gonna disappoint, uh, disappoint the boomers of the world that think that you move around and job to job? What are you gonna tell me? I got another offer at BCW, and I said, do you want this job? And he goes, Bill, I think BCW is gonna offer me an opportunity. And I went, okay, great and he went off to BCW, and he was very excited about being there. Uh, not a little bit later on, I get another phone call. Don't tell me you're leaving BCW. Well, don't be mad at me, Mr. Mata, but I got an offer at Edelman. And I said, oh my God, uh, BCW, Edelman, Weber Shanwick. Um, that's absolutely amazing, DeAnthony. Go for it. A little while later, ring, 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 you will not be leaving BCW. And he goes, Bill, I got a really great offer at MSL, and the MSL people are awesome. That's like saying you are perpetuating all the stereotypes that us boomers are thinking about. But if this is going to work for you, absolutely. So he goes to MSL, and, and I said, are you good? And he goes, I'm doing well. And I see the uh, MSL people, including a few people in the audience, saying, how's DeAnthony doing? We absolutely love this man. We will keep this man forever. I said, do not let him leave. <laughs> uh, not too much longer. <laughs> he calls me and goes, don't tell me you're not leaving MSL. Absolutely, positively not. Bill, I got an offer that I cannot refuse. But, but I want you to hear me out. Every single place I've gone to, Weber Shanwick, BCW, Edelman, MSNL, I have learned something and taken something away from every person I've met. 
And those experiences will always be invaluable to me, including the advice that you give me each and every day. I said, okay, what was the offer? They want to make me vice president and director of social media. I said, you need to take that job. So this is a person that at a very young age became an author. This is a, very, a person that at a very young age became an adjunct professor at Tulane University. This is a person that always finds a way to give back. And he is a man of very simple words. So if you saw him on the panel today, he gave three word answers, similar to what Mike Doyle was saying. And so some of these things just resonate with me today because he's now become an influencer. He's now become an award-winning marketer. But here are some of the things that he says, because he is a man of very simple words, but these words are powerful. First and foremost, get it done. Make it work. Always be present. Pay it forward. And the most important one that he said to me is make an impact. I want to make sure that you all know that this gentleman is making an impact today and watch his career because it will take off and he will pay it forward to each and every one of you 10 times over. Please join me in welcoming our emerging leader honoree, DeAnthony Jackson, the Vice President of OSB. First, I want to say thank you, Bill, for the delightful introduction. You didn't embarrass me too bad. <laughs> I feel honored um, to know you and um, to meet, be a mentee and also a friend of yours. Over the years, I've learned so much from you. Um, and tonight, I'm even more grateful for being bold enough to walk up to you and tell you my vision for my own career. So thank you. Also, Bill, by the way, I wasn't late tonight, just so you know. We have this running joke that I run just a few minutes late for everything. So last night for our seven o'clock dinner, I walk in the restaurant at 7.01, purposely. The jokes still sting just a little bit, so I'm getting, I'm getting better, just so you know. Um, to my honorees, congratulations. To the Planck Center, thank you so much. Um, it's amazing to accept an award like this. Um, to Bill's point, typically, I am one um, of very few words. I didn't know what I would say when I finally accepted this award, other than thank you. Um, as a matter of fact, up until I boarded the plane in New York, um, I still didn't know what I would say. It took me back to feedback an old boss gave me, similar to what you just said, Bill. He said, you're like a secret weapon. You don't always say a lot, but when we speak, we all listen and I've carried that throughout my career. Earlier this morning, the new Planck Center ambassadors, of which I'm very honored to be a part of now, had a breakfast and the word butterflies kept coming up as everyone introduced themselves to the group. I even mentioned it during the panel um, session today. And I've been feeling these butterflies since I got here and I was trying to pinpoint exactly um, what I was feeling. And I typically don't feel them like this unless I feel the pressure to speak because I always want to say something that means something and that inspires the folks that I'm talking to. I take what I do very seriously and honestly have beaten myself up, myself up just a bit if I must be honest and vulnerable for a moment. I know I don't have long, so I want to leave you with this specifically to the students in the room. Congratulations for being here. I wish I was a student who could take advantage of this back in the day. I shared these nine pieces of advice during my acceptance speech earlier this year for the first um, Hall of Fame award for my undergraduate degree at the University of Alabama, West Alabama, Go Tigers. The first one is you have more control over your experiences in life than you think, and however you want them to go, they can, but always be prepared to pivot because bumps in the road are inevitable. 
Second one is, it's about the end goal and your life's purpose. So stay present, but stay vigilant and focused because distractions are going to come sometimes. The third one, when you run into tough times, find a sacred place and talk to what you call the most high. For me, that is God himself. He speaks to us in ways that we sometimes cannot explain. Strive for excellence and take risk, but never be afraid to fail. That's when you learn your best lessons. In my book, 24, it's about 24 seven, me learning a life lesson every day. Change for the better of you, not because someone else wants to change you. You only have one life. Go after your dreams with everything in you, even if that means taking another job that inspires you. Take advantage of every opportunity and give, your, give it your best shot every single time. This is a good one. Every person you meet will teach you something. Don't take anyone for, for granted, but always set healthy boundaries. And then the last one that my mom always tell me is be grateful for all things as I am tonight. So thank you, everybody. <laughs>